Hey guys, it's Holly, and today I thought it was time for a little catch up, do a quick little Q&A. So I asked you on my Instagram stories just what you, what you wanted to know, if you had any questions for me. Let you know my thoughts and opinions, let you know what I'm thinking right now, so let's just chill and relax. First question is, your thoughts on Lego sets getting bigger and more expensive? Firstly, I love that username. I am not a big fan of it. Now, while I am very fortunate and, you know, buy a lot more Lego than I feel like the average person, for me, I'm not a big fan of this change at all. To me, bigger doesn't necessarily always mean better. Now, there are some really large Lego sets that I absolutely love and will just endlessly praise, some of which include the giant Disney castle. I wanted that set for so many years and getting that was a really Really big moment for me. Diagon Alley as well is absolutely fantastic and the Daily Bugle and there are a lot of large Lego sets that I absolutely love the look of but because a lot of these things keep getting more and more expensive as someone who likes a lot of things in pop culture and just loves Lego in general having everything be really expensive all the time I'm not a big fan of. Right now there's a cost of living crisis and people are struggling to pay their mortgages with rising interest rates and for me I'm just trying to save up for a house so having all of these large sets come out it means I'm missing out on a lot of things which you know is perfectly fine I don't have to have every single large set but at the same time it's like a lot of these sets I feel like if they were just like 100 200 dollars cheaper it would be a lot more feasible and a lot more people would be able to enjoy the work of the Lego designers and just these really cool products like I think a perfect example of this is the Hogwarts Express to me that's a set that didn't need to be that giant I get what they wanted to do and I get what they wanted to try and achieve but like they were with a lot of things that were unnecessary like the station and the giant train track I mean the train track does at least a little bit add to the display portion of things but I feel like if you just had the train on its own the set would have been cheaper and a lot better also just the scale was too big another example is the Lion Knights Castle I really 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 want to get that set I think it looks glorious I want to enjoy some of like the classic castle theme but like 600 Australian dollars even with that like 100 points to get what like 45 dollars off like I don't don't have a spare $550 to throw at that set. I just bought the Hogwarts Express. Like for me, Harry Potter is the priority. Like I'm not going to be buying the Razor Crest again. It's a beautiful model, just it's too expensive. And to me, it's as well like quite unnecessarily big. The Black Panther bust is though definitely the worst. Like I feel like that is a perfect case of this could have been a smaller set. There are some things that I think work really well for large sets. For example, the Sanctum from this year, the Daily Bugle, and again, the Disney Castle works fantastic, but I would just love for things not to just be blown up just because they can be. What are your comfort shows and movies? Your channel definitely comforts me. Thank you very much. That's really, really sweet. For me personally, some of like my favorite comfort movies, I feel like are Pixar movies. I love them. I grew up on them. They're really well done and they're really well made, especially like Toy Story 1 and 2. Like 3 is just like really emotional. Like I always cry. I still love that movie. It's like very comforting, but it also makes me bore my eyes out. I also love like the original Cars movie. Like that to me is very comforting. I don't necessarily have a comfort show, but I feel like the closest thing I get to that is the show called Gogglebox. Now it's specifically like the Gogglebox Australian version. The whole concept of the show is like you're literally watching just like everyday people watch a TV show and like commentate on it. It's like a live commentary video and it like the whole thing is like edited really well and like I just find it really hilarious. It's like my favorite thing. I will like re-watch the episodes as well which really does not make much sense but to me that's quite a comforting show as well even though I guess it's just more of like a really entertaining fun light-hearted thing for me. Did you do anything in school that helps your YouTube? No, I didn't. I mean, technically I didn't, but also I did. Um, however, there was this one course, which I later found out like way too late. Like it was like a year after or something in my senior year called multimedia, where basically you just did like After Effects and like VR work and all of that. And like, while I don't think that necessarily would have helped me too much with YouTube, I mean, it would have made like any time I try After Effects stuff a little bit faster, but it certainly would have helped me a lot when I did VFX as a career and like was going down that path and sort of thing. So I do regret not doing that, especially since like the subject that I ended up doing and like dropped out of like was on at the same time. Like I very easily could have done it. But I guess the only other thing in school that like helped me, I guess, with YouTube was when I was doing business studies as it covered, I guess, like a lot of the marketing and like finance things and just like running a business and just learning how to like manage my time and also just like how business works in general ended up being very beneficial, even though at 
at least at the moment. It's still on like a pretty small to medium scale, but it definitely taught me a lot. And I do remember, I guess, like quite a lot of the concepts and I have really put them to use these days, which is really cool. If you had to, what type of channel would you do if you couldn't do Lego anymore? This is really interesting. I do often actually think about this, but not from like a, if I didn't have to do Lego anymore, more from just a like, where else can I like branch off on? Like I would love just like for my own like content posting to like do more fun vlogs. I sort of like an entertaining, like sort of like fast paced, like storytelling sort of way, which is something that I guess I'm trying to work on as sort of the time goes. But I feel like if I didn't do Lego at all anymore, like it would really just be like, mostly pop culture based because essentially that's sort of how I feel I guess like the channel is but like it's expressed specifically through Lego like I'm a collector person and I love Lego I grew up on it so I feel like those two things combined is sort of how I ended up here but I guess as well I would love to do things like my favorite content creators where it's more I guess like, like commentary things or just like fun video ideas or just like me having fun and then just edit it in a way that I personally really enjoy although right now like some of the editing that I'm really enjoying the most I I think is like definitely stuff from the commentary sort of side of channels as well as like Casey Neistat and Emma Chamberlain's like vlog editing. I love that sort of cinematic style but it's also like quite entertaining from like a storytelling perspective but yeah I definitely feel like pop cultures would probably be like the next sort of like natural evolution and really start talking more about like movies, TV shows and like sort of that type of thing which I do now anyway but like it's sort of on the back side of things and then Lego really is the forefront. What's your favorite costume you've ever made? It could be in person or edited. I love this question because I mean, I have like a whole series where I just like fix minifigures and make like sort of like custom and modded versions of things. And I like often put a lot of them on display. Like if I bought extra pieces or something, I'll put them on display. Or if sometimes like I've borrowed things, like I'll leave the original version as is and come back to it. Off the top of my head, like some of my favorite ones were firstly like Bellatrix from the first ever video I did on that, like combining the older one and the newer version together. I really hope they do an updated detailed Bellatrix that looks anywhere sort of like this. I absolutely love her. Another one that comes to mind is just like a really simple one and it's like the Spider-Man Stark suit. Just having that lighter blue I think looks so much better. And I think the last one for me would be Commander Cody. Like I didn't expect to like love the jewel molded arms as much as I did. Like I knew that they were going to look good but after just completing that figure and adding the Palpatine hologram like I was really 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 happy and impressed with with him just overall I think added a lot to it even though it was very sort of like discreet sort of thing but yeah I love upgrading my minifigures and just making them look a little bit more detailed like I'm not typically the type of person that loves like overly detailed minifigures so using like strictly like existing Lego parts or just like minor I guess like custom parts or something I'd love to do in the future like is a lot of fun to me I just I love the way they look in person so much better. What are your thoughts on the Star Wars 2023 set rumors? I completely forgot that I actually didn't make a video on this. Honestly, overall, I'm really excited. Like I was thinking about it the other day. I was like, all right, like trying to think about what I was gonna buy in January. Cause for me, for the rest of the year, I just plan on buying the Winter Village set and probably as well, maybe the Haunted Mansion. I'm not too sure about that one yet though. And then when it comes to 2023, I mean, the modular is definitely piquing my interest. But again, I don't know if it's gonna be a day one thing. Like I feel like just sitting and waiting until like double VIP points is probably Probably what I would do when it comes to Star Wars like that's really I think where my money is going like day one the tie bomber I'm definitely I think going to get I guess it depends on like what it ends up looking like like I don't want it to be an Imperial shuttle situation but that one's really piqued my interest as well as of course the Captain Rex and Commander Cody helmets I am so excited for them I've got Boba Fett and I've got Darth Vader and I'm thinking about getting the Mandalorian one as well because like I just love like the character helmets so Cody and Rex like really really piqued my interest I'm very excited to see what they look like as well as more diorama sets like Endor diorama I'm hyped for because I just really want to have some more Endor stuff like that's not really I guess like a section of Star Wars that I typically I guess even like have any of besides like the tiny little 20th anniversary promo like I think that's really the only Endor representation I have for the most part also the rumors of like a Jabba's Palace one I mean I'm excited but I did also buy the 2012 Jabba's Palace and still haven't built it so again that one's really just of how it looks sort of thing I'm not gonna get the microfighter and I'm probably not gonna get whatever like the UCS set is but so far Star Wars 2023 is sounding incredibly promising and I am very 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 hyped.
Any retired sets you're planning on getting for the rest of this year? I mean, I did say that like the only thing I was gonna buy was like the Winter Village, though I am very tempted to try and get my hands on some more 501st sets just because of how hard they are to get in Australia. Like I'm heading to the US next month and spending some time with my friends in Orlando. So I'm sort of like, ooh, do I take the opportunity while I'm in the US to buy some 501st packs and bring them home with me? Like I've got five already in my storage unit when they came back on like Lego Shop at Home because I just sort of thought to myself, I was like, well, if I want to have them for my own collection, I'd much rather sort of have them and have bought them at retail price. And then if I decide I don't want them, I can always sell them just because they just did not exist in Australia. And especially with the new 501st set coming, which I didn't even mention that in that last question. But again, very excited for that set, especially since I have my army. So I think especially in Australia, like the interest for the 501st set is just going to go through the roof. But I also don't really want to go and spend spend like a couple hundred dollars just on like duplicates of sets to like sell or like for investment. Like I'm really not a big like Lego investment person. I would much rather put that money into sets that I don't have and for me to enjoy rather than just to like sit and gather dust until I decide to sell them or open them. Will you ever travel to Italy? So fun fact, I had an entire like Italian family holiday booked in of course, June of 2020 and that didn't happen. I was really, really excited like it was going to be like our last family holiday sort of thing. So we were going to go visit my grandparents and then fly into Venice, spend some time there and just go pretty much all around the country and have like a Italian road trip. We were going to go to Rome. We were going to go to Lake Como, which at least at the time I was like, oh, like what's there? It's just a lake. And then like after we booked it and as it was sort of like heading to January of 2020, I was rewatching the prequels and I learned that Lake Como is Naboo. And I was just suddenly so excited for Lake Como. I do really want to go there purely because it's Naboo. I mean, I've never been to Italy and I would love to go in general. It looks gorgeous. I don't know when I would go, but it's on my agenda for some day in the future. <laughs> Favorite era of Lego? I plan on doing a whole video on this sometime in the future, hopefully, you know, probably next month. But for me, and I don't know if it's just like my nostalgia or because it was like my childhood era, which very well could be the case. So please keep that in mind as I sort of talk about this. But it's like 2009 until like 2013, I think is like the latest, like the era with Toy Story 3 and Cars and Pirates of the Caribbean and Lord of the Rings and Harry Potter came back and Star Wars as well was like in one of its peak years and while I wasn't really into Star Wars back at that time I look back and there are so many good sets from all of the themes at that time I mean Ninjago started and I loved Ninjago when it started Alien Conquest was a thing as well sort of around that time period City had like its airport range the creator line was having like the really cool three-in-one houses like everything was just like so interesting and back at that time too all of the large sets and like I guess like the D to C sets besides, I guess, like Star Wars were cheaper. Like the Tower of Orthanc was a beautiful building that is super tall, super well done, super detailed. And like, it was like, what? Like 200 bucks, 250 bucks. Diagon Alley again was like a big set, but it wasn't overall too expensive. Like most of the big sets sort of capped up around like 2,500 pieces. And I loved it. There was so much detail on the minifigures and like there was, I feel like less stickers overall as well. And I just think like we just don't get that same attention to detail and like the new molds were a lot more I guess less like prominent back then as well I just feel like there was a lot more like care and like money put towards a lot of these themes whereas like these days I think the budgets are a lot stricter most of the time so like the care has to go into other things but to me that is the golden era I think of Lego and I hope that one day we can get to a period that's like that again I think these days Lego has just stretched themselves too thin there are like too many products there are too many themes so that like I guess attention to detail and just like in terms of I even I guess like using the print machines isn't as refined and isn't as concentrated as it was back then favorite thing to train at the gym well Jacob um, I mean this is pretty straightforward firstly like most other females it's my glutes because I spent like 10 years dancing like a lot of like I guess like my strength and my power is in my legs because you have to like jump you have to like throw your body around basically so I've always been like really really strong in my legs which just again makes training my legs and like my glutes a lot more enjoyable at the gym because like I'm already like quite strong there so like I feel a little bit more confident 
confident, but I do enjoy training upper body. I think I just hate it because like my weight is so low and it's so much more of an effort for me. Glutes and legs for me though is like so much fun though. I, I need to get better with my upper body. I think I just get intimidated. I want to go and use the dumbbells and like use like the little benches, but then I get intimidated. So I just go on the machines and like hide in the corner. <laughs> if I had to pick a specific exercise as well, it's between hip thrusts and leg press. And I lean more towards the leg press just because of how much of a pain it is to set up for a hip thrust all the time. It's such an exercise because I want to do it with a barbell. Whereas like leg press, I just, I just hop on the machine and it's like really fun. And like, that's definitely my favorite machine. I, I love it. It's great. <laughs> This question really baffles me and like I honestly don't know if I can answer it but I thought I would share it anyway just in case someone else has some advice. So Andy said that he always has a small allergic reaction when he's building big Lego sets. Is there any advice? He has like itchy skin and sneezing. I have never heard of someone have like an allergic reaction to Lego and I wonder if it's just I guess like there's a chemical within the plastic bricks or something that I guess like the longer sort of you spend on it like the more it sort of affects you. I've never heard of that unless there's like I guess some dust particles in there. But in terms of advice, the only thing I could suggest is like building Lego sets using like latex gloves or even like some of those felt gloves, which might be harder to like grab the bricks, but then you wouldn't be touching the bricks physically. I wonder if that would help because you're not touching them or if it's genuinely, I guess, just like something in the air surrounding the bricks that's doing it. But yeah, I'm really interested to know, maybe it's worth doing an allergy test, but yeah, if you're really into it and it's really, really bad, I would either take an antihistamine beforehand or again, use the gloves, but best of luck to that. I've never heard of that. So if anyone has any advice for Andy, comment down below. <laughs> What is your favorite thing that you've accomplished in the time of you having an active channel again? I'm a very reflective and sentimental person, so I really like this question. And there's a couple of things. I mean, the first that comes to mind was my charity stream last year for Are You Okay? I was so grateful and so happy with how that whole thing turned out. And thank you to everyone who watched and donated and just helped in any way, shape or form because being able to go and support the group that like supported me and helped me when I needed the most was so rewarding. and. So so heartwarming. I absolutely loved it. It was a lot of fun. Like I really enjoyed it. I mean, admittedly I was freezing when I had to jump into my pool, but it was well worth it. I am just like, I'm so happy with that stream and it was just, like really, really good. I want to do another one again someday, but I mean, it's a lot harder now, but I want to try and work something out and be able to do something like that again, definitely, because it was just an amazing thing for me. Do you have anything you're currently obsessed with? Love your channel, by the way. Again, thank you very much. I do. I and I actually probably should make like another favorites slash like obsessions video because I had a lot of fun doing that last time. There are a couple of things and they're not necessarily Lego related, but I don't care. The first is sewing. I mean, it's Halloween time and like I dress up every single year despite having nowhere to wear anything to and like no real reason either. I just do it because I love costumes and it's fun to dress up. So I've pulled out my sewing machine and I'm sewing myself my own costume this year. I'm gonna make a full video literally just dedicated to the costume costume and you bet I will be re-wearing this thing several, several times. It's taken me a very long time. I'm really impressed with myself. Like I suck at sewing, but like, I guess it's just like another hobby that I've like fallen into again. Like I sort of have like an on and off relationship with like a lot of my hobbies, but yeah, I'm getting really back into sewing. I've been like obsessed with it for the last three days. I'm like trying to get it all done so that everything is like ready. And I've really been enjoying that. Another thing I've been obsessed with is sort of like Lego Lord of the Rings and Lego the Hobbit. I really watched Lord of the Rings and I rewatched The Hobbit and now I just like have fallen back into like my trap uh, that I was in like 2012 where I'm like I need to get all the dwarves so like I've been partying together and unexpected gathering recently and I keep going back and I keep looking at the prices of the dwarves and like the fellowship and because they're so expensive I haven't done it but I've like really fallen deep into the world of Lord of the Rings and I'm obsessed and slowly I will get through them all. This question was asked just so many times and like I kind of feel kind of bad. Um, um, where's the Daredevil mug? It's in my storage unit. It's in a container. It's still all built up. I refuse to take it apart because I've made really good progress with it. I just haven't picked up on it. Like literally the last thing I need to do is the roof and the interior. And at this point, you know, I know that Daredevil's going to be coming back. Like he's going to be in the end of She-Hulk at some point. And then he's going to have his own show. And I honestly feel like it's going to take that show coming out for me, I guess, to like have this surge of inspiration and like 
motivation in order to get this thing finished but I do plan on finishing it like I'm really close like I'm really proud of everything I've done also I bought like quite a lot of pieces for it and like I finished all of the minifigures I really just need to sit down on Mecha Bricks and plan out the roof and I haven't done that which means I haven't been able to order pieces which means I haven't been able to finish building but I've sorted out my parts now so one day I mean I feel like it's a lot more realistic for me to like finish that mock than to like ever restart like my Hogwarts mocks just because I do not have the space to put all of that up whereas Daredevil it's smaller it's concise and it's still built I love this question most regretted Lego purchase there's a, there's a couple I feel like I've really got to sit back and think about this I mean one of them definitely had to be buying an entire box of Harry Potter CMFs I only just like got rid of them all relatively recently like that's taken me like almost two years to get rid of like all of the extras like that was definitely not worth doing I never plan on buying another full box of CMFs ever again and in saying that did I contemplate doing it for Disney next year um absolutely yes am I going to no because it's a waste of money but those are all of the questions for today thank you so much to everyone who submitted a question for me I read through them all they were very entertaining today and I hope you guys enjoyed just hanging out with me and catching up let me know what you plan on buying for the rest of the year or if you're just gonna sit and wait until next year and if you guys enjoyed this video please give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel down below be sure to follow me on instagram as well for when i do like ask questions in the future and until next time guys i'll see you later